the U.S. government has sanctioned a powerful and secretive Communist Party militia, and it could have a big impact on companies around the world. Welcome back to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. One good thing about 2020 is that the U.S. government is actually doing something about human rights violations in China. I know, I'm shocked too. For many years, the U.S. government has been great at talking the talk when it comes to condemning China's human rights abuses, but it's been less great at walking the walk, as in doing anything that actually penalizes the Chinese Communist Party for their human rights abuses. But now, that's changing. Last week, the Treasury Department officially sanctioned the Xinjiang Production and Construction Corps, or XPCC, as well as two officials from the XPCC. That's for their connection to serious human rights abuse against ethnic minorities in Xinjiang, which reportedly include mass arbitrary detention and severe physical abuse, among other serious abuses targeting Uyghurs and other ethnic minorities in the region. Those sanctions are under the Global Magnitsky Act, and basically mean that any property or assets the XPCC has in the U.S. are blocked, and that Americans can't do business with them, which is significant, and I'll explain why. Now, the Trump administration describes the XPCC as a paramilitary organization in the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region that is subordinate to the Chinese Communist Party, which is true, but the XPCC is a lot more than just a paramilitary group. It's been called a vast, strange, and powerful farming militia, and one of the most secretive organizations in China. Explaining everything the XPCC does is kind of like trying to describe a weird hybrid animal, like a saber-toothed moose lion. Yeah, I've been rewatching Avatar The Last Airbender. All right, so first of all, the XPCC is actually a paramilitary force. It's known in Chinese as Bingtuan, which means Army Corps. And that's why it's organized into divisions and regiments. XPCC militia forces had patrolled the streets of Urumqi and guarded key installations following ethnic riots in 2009. But most of the almost 3 million people who belong to the XPCC are not active paramilitary troops. Most of them are farmers. It's a vast farming militia that cultivates cotton, tomatoes, and lavender, and dabbles in mining and textiles. The XPCC produces about a third of the cotton that comes out of Xinjiang. It's also a multi-billion dollar business, which constitutes 17% of Xinjiang's GDP, manufactures 40% of the region's wool, and exports 17% of the world's ketchup. Wait, wait, hold on. Ketchup? Yes, it turns out that your ketchup might be from Xinjiang which is concerning on so many levels. But the XPCC isn't just a paramilitary or a multi-billion dollar state-owned enterprise. It also administers so much land in Xinjiang that it serves as a parallel regional government, essentially becoming a state within a state within a military-style organizational structure. Nine of Xinjiang's 28 cities are directly under its control. They also have their own acrobatic troop. Oh no, she let the bowl drop. Now she's going to a labor camp. Speaking of labor camps, the XPCC runs those in Xinjiang too. In addition to the labor camps, the XPCC also runs its own prisons, its own public security bureau, court system, and justice department. So the XPCC is a multi-billion dollar farming paramilitary that acts as a parallel Xinjiang government and runs its own police, court system, and labor camps. Like I said, a saber-toothed moose lion. The XPCC has also been compared to the British East India Company, which helped colonize large parts of Asia. And in some ways, that's a very good comparison because the XPCC was deliberately designed as a colonizing force. The founding rationale of the XPCC was to ensure that sufficient, 
Han Chinese settled and remained in Xinjiang. 86% of the almost 3 million people who are part of the XPCC are Han Chinese. That's the dominant ethnicity in China. Chinese Communist Party propaganda links the XPCC to the historical practice of stationing garrison troops along the border frontiers of China. But the XPCC was started by Chairman Mao in 1954 as a way of getting rid of the 175,000 mostly enemy KMT soldiers who were left over from the Civil War. Let's just say, not all of them wanted to go to Xinjiang. Today, the Chinese Communist Party considers the XPCC central to their control of Xinjiang. In 2014, Chinese leader Xi Jinping said that the XPCC should become a stabilizer of frontier security and stability. As a mark of its importance, the XPCC gets massive state subsidies. But it's also doing more business in other countries, often through subsidiaries. For example, XPCC subsidiaries are part of China's Belt and Road Project in Pakistan and in Central Asia. Western companies have gotten into trouble by doing business with XPCC before. For example, Calvin Klein, Tommy Hilfiger, and Nike were customers of a Hong Kong company called Esquel, which had ties with the XPCC for their cotton. Since getting in trouble with the U.S. government, Esquel is divesting from the XPCC. And this is why the U.S. government sanctions are so significant. By sanctioning the entire XPCC, the government could force almost all American companies to divest from Xinjiang completely. And it could affect other international companies who do business with American companies as well. And if the XPCC loses a lot of business, that's a huge blow to the Chinese Communist Party. And I would say that's a good thing, what with the labor camps and all. And now, it's a time when I answer questions from you, my loyal 50 Cent Army, fans of the show who support what we do through the crowdfunding website Patreon. Jason asks, Chris, what are the chances these floods cause any real change in the majority of the Chinese citizens? Well, Jason, that's a tough one to answer because many of the people who are the most affected by these floods are poorer Chinese who live in these rural areas. In many cases, they already tend to be more outspoken against the Chinese Communist Party than the urban middle and upper middle class. But for the people who don't live in areas directly affected by the flooding, they mostly see state-run media talking about how great the government is doing at saving people from the flooding. So I would say the current floods won't really change their minds. But in general, Jason, it's hard to get a good sense of what public opinion about the party really is in China, since people get punished for criticizing the party. Thanks for your question, Jason. And for all of you watching, consider joining the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army. You'll have a chance to ask me questions on the show, and there are some other cool perks as well. Check out patreon.com slash China Uncensored to learn more. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.